Hi, I'm Stefano from the RBA. In this video, which is part of our series of videos on inflation, I will talk about how CPI inflation is calculated. Links to the other videos in the series are provided in the description. In the introduction video, we saw that inflation is generally defined as an increase in the prices of goods and services in the economy. The most well-known way to measure inflation is a consumer price index, or CPI, which measures the percentage change in the price of a basket of goods and services purchased by the average household. In Australia, the CPI is calculated by the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the ABS. To understand how inflation is calculated, the first question is, how does the ABS choose the items in the CPI basket? For this, the ABS uses information about the way the average household in Australia spends its income. The ABS looks at what items households spend their money on and how much they spend on each item. For example, think about rent, clothes, movie tickets and many other goods and services and the amount of money that households spend on these. Based on this information, the ABS selects the goods and services to include in the basket and what their weight should be. The weight is the importance of each item in the basket and it reflects the share of household income spent on that item. For example, if households spend more of their income on rents, then rents will have a larger weight in the CPI basket. We will see shortly an example of how these weights are used. In total, the ABS collects around 100,000 prices each quarter from a wide range of sources, including retailers, supermarkets, department stores and websites, government authorities, real estate agents, and many more. These thousands of items are included in 11 high-level groups, which represent the areas where Australian households spend their income. Currently, the largest group is housing, which includes items like rent payments and electricity bills. This group represents almost one quarter of what the average household spends in Australia, and that is its weight in the CPI basket. The other groups represent progressively smaller shares of household spending, for example, food and transport, all the way down to communication, which include, uh, includes things like your mobile phone bills. You may find it difficult to match this breakdown with the expenditures of your own household. It is important to remember that these are average numbers and that each household will be different. For example, the number of people in the household, their age and where they live. With all this in mind, we need a simple example to understand how the ABS puts all these price changes together to calculate CPI inflation. Imagine an economy where households buy only two items, a book and one hour of childcare services. These two items will be the CPI basket in our economy. Let's assume that in 2018, the price of a book was $20 and the price for one hour of childcare was $30. In our simple example then, the average household spent a total of $50 in 2018. 60% of this, $30, is spent on childcare and 40%, $20, on books. So 60% and 40% are the shares or weights for these items in the CPI basket for our economy. Now let's assume that one year later in 2019, prices have gone up for both items. We can easily calculate the growth of prices for the two items uh, one year to the next, and we can get annual inflation of 2.5% for books and 4.7% for childcare. To calculate a weighted average inflation rate for our basket, we simply multiply each of the weights by the inflation rate for the corresponding item and add together the results. For our simple economy, we obtain an annual CPI inflation of 3.8%. Because of the weights used in the CPI calculation, price changes for the items on which households spend more money, in this case, childcare, will be more important that for the final result. Hence why the inflation rate for our economy is closer to 4.7% than 2.5%. For the Australian economy, every quarter, the ABS tracks price changes for thousands of items in the basket, 
and uses their weights to calculate CPI inflation using a similar method to the one just explained. To check how prices of goods and services across the Australian CPI basket have changed over time, there is a tool on the RBA website called the Inflation Explorer. You can use it for information on all categories in the CPI basket, as well as for the basket as a whole. It also allows you to compare price changes of multiple items against each other. For example, thinking about our book prices from earlier on, we can use the Explorer to check what happened to prices of books in Australia between 2015 and 2019, as in the screenshot provided here. A link to the Explorer is included in the description. Now that we've looked at calculating inflation for a basket of goods and services, it's important to consider some limitations of the CPI calculation. In this video, I will only give a high-level overview. We will look at the things that CPI does not measure, the consequences of the CPI basket being updated only annually, and we will consider the impact of improvements in the quality of goods and services included in the basket. You can check out others in the explainer on inflation and its measurement on the RBA website. Let's start by what the CPI does not measure. The CPI is an index, so it tracks how prices of items in the basket change over time, but does not provide an indication of the level of those prices. For example, it can tell you that fruit prices have increased 3% last year, but it does not tell you what that price is. Second, the CPI measures price changes in the metropolitan areas of Australia's eight capital cities. This is where two thirds of Australian households live. But it does not measure price changes in regional, rural or remote areas, which may evolve differently to prices in metro areas. CPI is not an ideal measure of changes in the cost of living. Cost of living inflation is the change in spending by households required to maintain a given standard of living. So it is based on the choice of that specific standard of living and not on the spending of the average household. Another challenge comes from the fact the CPI basket is fixed. If you recall from earlier, we looked at the shares or weights of the different items in the CPI basket. These weights are adjusted annually, but households can change their spending behavior at any time, including in response to changes in the price of goods and services. This can lead to what we call substitution bias. For example, imagine if the price of beef increases, but the price of land stays the same. Households will buy less beef and use some of this income towards buying more land, a close substitute for beef. Even though households have changed the amount of income they spend on beef and lamb, the weights in the basket remain the same. Households now spend less income on beef and more income on lamb. This means that too much weight is given to beef prices, which have increased, and not enough to lamb prices, which have not. The result is that CPI inflation will be a little higher because the higher price will be given more weight than it deserves. This is what we call a bias. If we look at recent times during the COVID-19 pandemic, there have been large changes in consumption expenditure shares. For example, travel restrictions and social distancing resulted in household spending more on home entertainment and groceries instead of going on international holidays or eating out. But the weights for these items in the basket did not change. Among other things, this makes it more difficult to use CPI to understand the inflationary pressures in the economy. Lastly, CPI is intended to measure pure price changes and not changes in the prices paid for items. What we mean by this is that CPI should ignore changes in actual prices paid that are caused by a change in the quality of an item. For example, if the size of a bag of pasta doubles and the price doubles as well, there has actually been no change in the pure price of pasta once you adjust for the change in the size of the bag. However, a more complicated challenge appears when, for example, you add a better camera to a mobile phone. In this case, the price paid will go up but part of the increase will be connected to the change in the quality of the camera. So the ABS will want to remove the increase in price that is due to the improved quality of the mobile phone. 
so we can do a like-for-like -like comparison. Quality adjustments for services are particularly difficult to measure. For example, how do you measure the value of an improved haircut? Because these adjustments are only estimates, they can result in under or overestimation of the pure price changes, and so under or overestimation of CPI inflation. The size of these adjustments can potentially be meaningful for some items, for example, high-tech items, which are continuously improving. We'll leave it here for our overview of the CPI basket, calculating inflation, and some of its challenges. Some useful links are provided in the description. See you next time.